Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at the 1D wave equation with initial conditions when time equals zero. So when we add initial conditions, we replace t with zero, and the solution to our wave equation u simply comes in a, a function of position only. We can do the same for the initial velocity when we take the first derivative of the function u with respect to time, then we can see that it simply becomes a function of x only, not of time. Notice that this represents displacement in the y direction or in the vertical direction or in the perpendicular direction to the motion and therefore I kind of drew a, drew a wave over here. If the wave is traveling to the right, then any position on the wave away from the equilibrium point would be the value away from the equilibrium point would be u, the equation that we're looking for, the representation of how far away we are from the equilibrium point for a certain position x and for a certain time t. The, the rate at which that point moves either away or towards the equilibrium point, that's called the first derivative of u with respect to time. In this case, we need to take the partial derivative because we have two different variables, x and t. So that represents the speed at which that point on the wave goes back to the equilibrium point in this case. So as the wave travels to the right, you can see that that point will go to, to zero, and then as it continues, it'll go below zero, and it'll go up and down and up and down like that. It'll represent the speed at which that point on the wave moves. Now the general solution to the one-dimensional wave equation looks like this. It's the function u as a, as a function of x and t, which can be represented as two functions, one of x plus ct and one of x minus ct, c being the velocity of the wave, x being the position, t being the time. And then if we solve that for t equals zero, then we get the initial condition. And then you can see that we simply replace t by zero, and this becomes f of x plus g of x with the t now being gone. If we want to find the initial condition when t equals zero for the motion, for the velocity of the wave going up and down, not the velocity of the wave moving in the direction of the wave, but the velocity of a point on the wave, for example, this was a string, you'd see that the string goes up and down. You pick a point on the string and you keep track of how fast that point is moving up and down, perpendicular to the velocity of the wave. And then we can see that when we take the first derivative of that, and we write the equation in terms of the cosine of kx minus kct plus the phase angle, then the derivative will look like this. However, if we take the general solution of the equation and we take the first derivative of u with respect to t, then you can see that when we do that and then set t equal to zero, then we have the derivative of this, which is f prime times the derivative of ct, which gives us c, and then we take the derivative of this, which is a g prime, times the derivative of minus ct, which gives us a minus c. And this would then be the representation of the velocity of a point on the wave perpendicular to the motion of the wave. And notice when we put t equal to zero, then that drops out and it's simply a, a function of position only and the derivative of the function f and g. Then if you realize, of course, that f is a function of p, then the f prime would then represent a derivative with respect to p of that function. So that's how we want to interpret that. So this is how we find and infuse the initial conditions on a wave equation. Notice that when we let t equal to zero, the wave equation then changes from this to this for the position, and from this, you take the derivative and ends up being this when we look at the initial condition of the perpendicular velocity to the motion of the wave. And that's how we want to interpret how we apply the initial conditions to the 1D wave equation.